This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. The Complete Letters of Pliny the Younger Read by Russell Bentley With Ben on Wookway For Naxos Audiobooks Book 1 1. To Septicius Clarus You have constantly urged me to collect and publish the more accomplished of the letters that I may have written. I have made such a collection, but without preserving the order in which they were composed, as I was not writing a historical narrative. So I have taken them as they happen to come to hand. I can only hope that you will not have cause to regret the advice you gave, and that I shall not repent having followed it. For I shall set to work to recover such letters as have up to now been tossed on one side, and I shall not keep back any that I may write in the future. Farewell. 2. To Maturus Arianus As I see that your arrival is likely to be later than I expected, I forge you the speech which I promised in an earlier letter. I ask that you will read and revise it as you have done with other compositions of mine, because I think none of my previous works is written in quite the same style. I have tried to imitate, at least in manner and turns of phrase, your old favourite Demosthenes, and Calvus, to whom I have recently taken a great fancy. For to catch the fire and power of such acknowledged stylists is only given to the heaven-inspired few. I hope you will not think me conceited if I say that the subject matter was not unworthy of such imitation, for throughout the whole argument I found something that kept rousing me from my sleepy and confirmed indolence— that is to say, as far as a person of my temperament can be roused. Not that I abandoned altogether the pigments of our master Cicero. When an opportunity arose for a pleasant little excursion from the main path of my argument, I availed myself of it, as my object was to be terse without being unnecessarily dry. Nor must you think that I am apologizing for these few passages— for just to make your eye for faults the keener, I will confess that both my friends here and myself have no fear of publishing the speech. If you will but set your mark of approval against the passages that possibly show my folly, I must publish something, and I only hope that the best thing for the purpose may be this volume, which is ready finished. That is the prayer of a lazy man, is it not? but there are several reasons why I must publish, and the strongest is that the various copies I have lent out are said to still find readers, though by this time they have lost the charm of novelty. Of course, it may be that the booksellers say this to flatter me. Well, let them flatter, so long as fibs of this kind encourage me to study the harder. Farewell. 3. To Caninius Rufus. How is Comum looking, your favourite spot and mine? And that most charming villa of yours? What of that? And its portico, where it is always spring, its shady clumps of plane trees, its fresh crystal canal, and the lake below that gives such a charming view? How is the exercise ground? So soft, yet firm to the foot. How goes the bath that gets the sun's rays so plentifully as he journeys round it? What two of the big banqueting halls, and the little rooms just for a few, and the retiring rooms for night and day? Have they full possession of you, and do they share your company in turn, or are you, as usual, continually being called away to attend to private family business? You are indeed a lucky man, if you can spend all your leisure there. If you cannot, your case is that of most of us. But really, it is time that you passed on your unimportant and petty duties for others to look after, and buried yourself among your books in that secluded yet beautiful retreat. Make this at once the business and the leisure of your life, your occupation and your rest. 
Let your waking hours be spent among your books, and your hours of sleep as well. Mold suffering.